Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Very happy today to be joined by Big LG, Doc Gallows, here on the line. What? How are you doing today? Here we go. What's going on? I'm great, man. How are you doing? Hey, I hear I hear you just got off another show. I know you've got something going on, I think, tonight with High Spots. It's been flooded with oh, these. Oh, that was last night. Oh, yeah, last night. Hey, it's a media blitz. That's a me- it's a media blitz, and uh, I appreciate jumping on here with you guys today to discuss everything going on. It's a very exciting time. I don't know if, if this is common knowledge, and I'm just out to lunch, but uh, Doc Gallows, what are you a doctor of? Pain? Uh, well, I'm the director of Chaos, if you look it up. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I, sh- I should have known that. I should have known that. Well, listen, we got a lot to talk about. We got Talking Chopamania, Fight.TV on Saturday night. Enjoy the insanity is the is the tagline. We had Carl on here. We had Rocky Romero. I hear that Sex Ferguson is going to be in the main event of the show. What can you tell us about Talking Chopamania? Oh, Talking Chopamania, the worst pay per view ever. I hope it ends up being wrestling's greatest parody. Uh, just like you said, 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night, available on iPay-Per-View via the Fight app, but also all American and Canadian pay-per-view providers, Dish, In Demand, ATTU, Verse, Verizon. Just look it up, go to the pay-per-view section, scroll down with your TV remote, click buy. It's only fourteen ninety-nine. We have all kinds of things in store for you. This is not going to be five-star wrestling matches. No, no, no. This is wrestling with a wink. Wrestling is supposed to be fun. We're going to do just that. You're going to see some of your favorite characters all throughout professional wrestling from different genres, from different generations, all coming together to jump in on the laugh, have a good time with us. You know, you you look around the world right now, we have a worldwide pandemic going on. There's social unrest across this country. So as entertainers, as professional wrestlers, we wanted to give you something that we love and be able to laugh along with us. And that's exactly what you get in Talking Shop of Mania from a social distancing battle royal to a briefcase and a tree match. Who the heck knows what that could end up being? We have a tribute to the 1990s, which the three of us grew up knowing and loving, and many, many more action-packed things. But it all culminates with the Boner Yard match, where Chad Too Bad, Sex Ferguson, tag team partners for 35 years, go in their separate ways, and now they have the opportunity to settle the score in a boner yard one of these two combatants will be buried alive tomorrow night on pay-per-view do not miss talk and shop a mania holy smokes you know when carl was on the show the other day he said that he got the call about being cut from wwe and he said he didn't talk to you for like an hour and then an hour later you called and you had like a dozen bookings is that basically how this went down yeah, I don't, I'm not a rearview mirror guy. The getting cut by WWE wasn't. Uh, I think he took it harder than I did. It's just it's professional wrestling, and uh, you know we already delved into all that. There's no reason to beat a dead horse with it. But uh, you know we're professional wrestlers by trade. We've both been doing it our entire adult lives. We've never had real jobs, never want them. And uh, I thought, hey, here's an opportunity for us to take those handcuffs off be more creative than we've ever been, show layers of our personality to the entire world, and, uh, you know, it all tied in, create and talk and shop a mania, and then uh, leading into signing with Impact, because now we have all this creative liberty, and we have a brand that wants us to wear two hats, and they're willing to co-promote all these crazy ideas that are coming out of our heads. So uh, I'm about as happy as I've ever been in this business right now. I can honestly say that. And uh, like I said at the beginning, it's just a very exciting time, I think, for all three of us. And um, in the world that we're in right now, it's going to be an exciting night for wrestling tomorrow night, especially the serious wrestling fan. All right, so here's a here's a question for you. So you, you get the call that you're no longer with WWE, and obviously there's, yeah. there's Impact out there, which you guys ended up signing with, and there's New Japan and AEW sure. and Ring of Honor, all these different... Who was the first yeah. person that you called after you were released? As far as like, hey, we're free. Uh, I thought we needed to get out of the country, and I needed Carl to relax. So I call. I made a call to a foreign promoter and booked us in Spain. <laughs> I thought that the world would be open by now, and we would be heading over there and enjoying the Spanish Sea and doing some wrestling and some signing and making some brother cash. That's what we do. And then uh, 
that was all. I got the call. I hung up. I did that. And then I got out of my sauna and I started writing Talking Shop of Mania because that's just how my brain works. Why did your brain work in that way? I mean, have you had an idea of doing something like this? Like, this was always kind of like a, ha, ah, if I'm ever not with WWE, I mean, this is the first thing I'm going to do. Or did you go in the sauna and you were just thinking about, you know, impact or whatever, and this came to you? No, I mean, you know, I, I have a creative brain that a lot of people haven't seen how weird it can be. Um, I was thinking about the irony of the fact that 11 days earlier, we participated in the main event of the first night of WrestleMania in a Boneyard match with The Undertaker and AJ Styles, two of the greatest performers to ever lace boots. Can't argue that fact. And here we are with this crazy podcast and this big sense of humor if we don't spoof this, we're doing ourselves a disservice and we're doing our portion of the audience a disservice. So it's time to make a parody. You know, Carl and I often say our favorite movies is kids with a Hot Shots movie. That's right. Yep. Um, so, and they were great parodies of, 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 uh, of great movies. And that's what we wanted to create. And uh, this is all done for fun. It's done with a wink. It's not done to poke fun at anybody. And, and you know, some traditionalists might not be in love with the idea of it, but you know what? If it's not your cup of tea, you don't have to watch, but I think if you give it a chance, if you watch that boater yard match, you see all these cameos, you see the inside humor, I think you're going to laugh right along with us, get a big kick out of it, and I think you'll get it. And when I say that, that means that you just might by talking shop a mania too. Well, actually, Carl, Carl had said that his, his great fear was that it would do so well there would have to be another one. Well, I got the projections today, so he's in big trouble. Oh man, oh man! Now, <laughs> I, I guess I guess the question now, this as you noted, is not like a wrestling pay per view, and and I told him the same thing. Like, I, I know you want this to be the worst pay per view of all time, but it will never be worse than the Heroes of Wrestling, which was a, a pay per view in the nineties, <laughs> which absolutely I'm very familiar. Oh my God! I don't think he even knew what it was. I don't think he ever saw it. But if you saw it. Well, yeah, he, he's not. Yes, he's not as much of a historian as I am. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. I loved it for all the wrong reasons, and that's why I want you to love talking Shopamania. It's, so, it's there's just wait and see. There's stuff that will will fall into line with that, even though that was being presented as a serious pay per view. That uh, you know, there were, <laughs> we can go over the problems in a whole nother interview. Hey, Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov versus the Bushwhackers <laughs> was at the time, and it still may be if I watch it again, the worst match I've ever seen in my entire life. It was so bad. I think I might have to find that on YouTube tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's one to I look at seen, again. I haven't seen it in years. <laughs> well, I mean, in the 90s, you know, there were so many good workers in the 90s that came from the territories that when you saw a match that bad, it was like, it hit you like a ton of bricks. But then, you know, as you move into the 2000s, I mean, there was a lot of bad wrestling in the 2000s and the 2010s. So I'm not even sure going oh, yeah, back it actually yeah. would be that bad. I mean, maybe it's been eclipsed by some of the stuff that we've seen. Well, it's fun to go back and look at because there are things that you forget about, you know, how bad they were. Or, or for me, when I was growing up, I didn't realize they were as bad as they were at the time. Sure. And I think that that's kind, of, that's kind of why all this is funny. You know, this social distancing battle royal. If you don't get what's going on in the ring, listen to us on commentary and how hard we're legitimately laughing. Because no matter what you tell somebody, when you send them out there, it's on them. You can't, you can't control what happens after that. And even though a lot of this was shot cinematically, um, there, I mean, it's full of mishaps, and that's, that's what I love about it. So. You know, since you mentioned that, I, I grew up watching like eight, late 80s, early 90s WWF. That was like my first, you know, probably 87, 88, I started watching WWF. And there are a lot of yeah. things I remember where, like I remember Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels being awesome. And I remember that I like the Ultimate Warrior, but, you know, he kind of sucked in the ring. But looking back yeah. today, he was. go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was just going to say. He kind of sucked in the ring, but he was so cool looking. I mean, that's what we all fell in love with wrestling sure. in the first place was what these guys looked like. And I had to go back when I was an adult and got into business and go, oh, he wasn't. Okay. All right. I get this. I understand why he was on there. And it makes it fun. But there were there were other things that I go back and look at now. And, and you know, a guy like Earthquake, who when I was a kid, he was just like, ah, he's just this big fat guy squishing Hulk Hogan. But, you know, you you watch him years later and it's like, this John Tenta could fucking or could work. This guy was great. That's that. Yes, he absolutely could. And there, there's a ton of guys like that 
who get looked over because, you know, that, that cartoon era, the early 1990s, and they're kind of saddled with those characters and stuff. Like, you see that with – I was thinking about that not long ago. I look at PCO over in Ring of Honor, you know, and, and I didn't – I was like, oh, he's one of the Quebecers. I don't like them, and that's stupid. And uh, all these years later, you look at him or you go back and look at some of those matches and, like, the gimmicks he was doing, and they'd send him out to have a singles match with Bret Hart, and he'd have a damn good match. The guy was a great worker and still is at 50 years old. I was watching some old superstars, and, and the Mountie was on there, and, oh, my God, yeah. he's so great. I didn't rec- I didn't realize when I was a kid. That's IRS is another one, Mike Rotundo. I had this conversation with Jericho one day. We were sitting on the beach having some drinks, and we were just talking about – I love talking about old WCW, and he goes, I never realized how good Rotundo was. He'd come in there on those Saturday morning tapings, and, like, you just get sent out to the ring, and he's calling all these crazy spots and just working his ass off, and, like, the dude was phenomenal. He just doesn't get the credit for it because you almost, you know, forget that part of it. So – as far as like the future now, obviously you've you've got impact and and the Motor City Machine Guns just won the tag team titles, so that sounds like an awesome feud. Yeah. But uh, you know you've been yeah, that's... yeah. Well, we can go back to that in a second. But I'm, my point was like you've been in WWE sure. for a long time, so now looking forward, I mean, talk about the Machine Guns and and who else are you guys like excited to get a chance to get in there with? Man, I, I mean, the Motor City Machine Guns, I think, is a dream tag match for us, being being a uh, highly ranked team in them as well, and especially in Impact, where, like, I mean, those guys are legends now. When you look at the years they put in, what they did for that tag division, and to have them back together while they're still in their prime and can still really go, and we can too, I think that's a great one. Uh, I've been very impressed by the North. You know, um, I was watching Impact while in WWE, and I didn't know those guys were getting to meet them until I went to Impact, but highly impressed with them. Uh, and then you step outside of the tag team stuff. I think there's there's a big opportunity for Carl and I to show different layers of ourselves as singles competitors, too. Like, I would love to see Eddie Edwards and Carl Anderson. I'd love to see handcuffed off Eric Young and Carl Anderson. I would love to turn up the brutality and show some things I've never done on American television with some of these, these big monsters that are over there as well. I think that there's great, great opportunity right now to create even more buzz and to have some great, exciting, you know, hard hitting professional wrestling. And that's what, you know, that's what we've been missing these last few years. It's nice to collect that, that big paycheck and all that. But I mean, you sign a sweet deal, you go somewhere where you have some say so and what's going on and you get to start creating again and doing what you really love. And that's, that's being a professional wrestler. You know, one more question here before we have to head to a break, but I look at the lineup of everybody that's on the show tomorrow, talking shop of mania, I guess you know, as, as has been mentioned the last couple of days, Scotty Riggs couldn't make it, but he was he was going to be there. Was there anybody yeah. who, man, you wanted this person on Talking Shop of Mania, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work? Uh yeah, and, and there, there's there's it's a two part answer, and I, I won't be too long with this. I intentionally hoped it would do well and save some people I really wanted because I want if there's a sequel, like we can't try to get everybody on this one. I really wanted Raven and we were back and forth on it. And and Scotty recently had a a few uh, health blemishes. So he was like, you know, I don't think it's responsible for me to come down there in this pandemic. And even with the, we had social distancing parameters, all that stuff. And my wife's a registered nurse checking everybody in temperatures, the whole nine yards. Uh, so I said, yes, great. Obviously, don't do it. And in true talking shop of Mania form, we were going to go to his house and film a segment. And <laughs> we'll actually hold that thought. We're right at a break. I'll be back in a moment. Observer Live. Joe Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Doc Gallo is joining us here today, Saturday, August 1st. Talking shop of Mania, Fight.tv, international pay per view. Nothing on Saturday night except a low level UFC. So you got nothing to do except watch Talking Shop of Mania. And Luke, let's get some plugs in for Doc. Let's get some plugs in for everything here. How many times am I going to screw up on this show? Go ahead. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. Saturday, August 1st, all American and Canadian pay per view apps, any cable system you have, scroll down, you can click purchase. The low, low price of $14.99, available internationally on iPay-Per-View via Fight TV, the Fight app. You can watch it right there. The main event, a boner yard match. Pitting my character Sex Ferguson versus Machine Gun Carl Anderson's character Chad Too Bad. One of these men will be buried alive on pay-per-view Saturday night. Don't miss out. Cameos from some of the biggest stars in all of professional wrestling 
Also, Impact Wrestling, Tuesday nights on Access TV, 8 p.m. If you don't carry the channel, it's available for free on the Twitch app. So watch us there and follow the Talking Shop podcast. Rate, like, subscribe. We talk all things pro wrestling, a lot of laughing, a little vulgarity. Join us, crack a beer, take off your pants, listen to the worst podcast ever, Talking Shop. Excellent job. I'm glad we have one professional here on this show. And by the way, if you're listening to this show right now and you buy the show tomorrow, you will save four cents. It's fourteen ninety five for listeners of this program. Fight.tv wow. and traditional pay-per-view. What do you think about that? I absolutely love it. You need to do it right here. You need to click it. You need to purchase it. You need to get that thing right now. Start preparing those tailgate parties. Get yourself a little cocktail, whatever it is you need. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wrestling's greatest parody, the worst pay-per-view ever, Talk and Shop a Mania, Saturday, August 1st. And we're out of time, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk to you again next time, Wrestling Observer Live.